Hello, everyone. We are going to be talking about chapter 10, which is some renewable energy sources, including solar energy. Um, this is from chapter 10 of our current textbook. And so a lot of this is going to be a review, and that's okay. Uh, we still just want to address it. So if you've never heard of solar energy, solar energy is taking energy from the sun and using it to create electrical energy. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you this now. If you hop over to my YouTube channel, I have a lot of little tiny short videos about these topics. Um, Right now we've got, this one is fantastic. I have never, I mean, I have, I didn't make it. Uh, my kids actually discovered this because they like this YouTube channel for kids. And it really, really does a great job explaining how a solar panel works. I know it says for kids, but trust me, it gives a level of detail in there that will make understanding solar energy really, really easy. So if you can just get past the part that it says for kids, Go watch this video. I put it on the World of Chemistry playlist. Go check it out now because it does a fantastic job explaining how solar panels work. And then we have a solar power and renewable energy machine that the kids and I use a lot. And so we got it out and we use solar energy to power a buzzer. It's a 50 second video. You can find 50 seconds to go check that out. We also used then the the, small, the solar panel in two different angles to figure out how much voltage we were making. Um, and then the other two videos from this week are voltage of a small hand generator, that's this crank on the side, and then some fuel cells. So I really encourage you to go check those out um, because I think it'll help you get started. So solar energy, there are some obstacles. A lot of people um, are down on solar energy. And so one of them is, you know, the fact that your solar energy is going to vary by your location and by the weather. You're going to need some sort of backup energy source if you're using solar energy. And then obviously there is a cost consideration, but cost is a cost is an obstacle to everything. I mean, all sorts of energy production methods cost money. That's part of the problem. It doesn't matter what kind of energy you're dealing with. They all have costs. So you need a backup storage system when you're working with solar energy and either you can make it hybrid and you could have some sort of fossil fuel source as your backup method, or you can also have a storage period like a battery, which again is going to add cost, but everything costs money like there's no such thing as a free lunch. So energy is stored in chemical bonds. If you want to think of it like that, you can you can decompose water and you can get hydrogen and oxygen gases and then that will be able to be a source of energy later in the future. But when you burn anything, you're gonna lose some energy as heat. Let's talk about hydroelectric power. I have another video on my channel. I forgot to put it in with this section as well, but I do have a little video on my YouTube channel. I can actually show it to you here at the end. It's one that my uh, one of my kiddos and I made, but it works, <laughs> like I said, don't don't be down on the fact that these some of these videos are for kids because basically you're taking a really complicated system and you're just explaining it in an easy to understand way. So you've got water coming in, it falls down the, the spillway. At the bottom, you've got your generators and it produces your electricity. There are some disadvantages to hydroelectric power. You, you have a, a limited number of rivers that can be dammed. Um, when you do dam a river, it requires large areas of land to be flooded. So, you know, it requires people to move out of the land. It requires whatever animals and creatures were living on that land to either die or have to go somewhere else. Um, and then marine life, you know, if you're, a, if you're a salmon trying to swim upstream and you can't now because there's a dam, well, then there's a threat to a marine life that way. Wind power is something you may have seen in your life just driving around. Um, wind farms look kind of like this. There's just rows and rows and rows of these wind 
And so what makes wind, if you've ever wondered what causes wind in the first place, you know, my kids ask me all the time, mom, what's wind? And I am able to explain it to them. So maybe the next time someone asks you what's wind, you can really impress them and explain to them how winds form. So heated air, is ex it expands, right? So that means that it's less dense, it rises up. Then cooler air rushes in, it comes in to fill that space. And then that effect is, is wind. That's pretty much how it works. So when you're talking about wind power, one of the big complaints against wind power is it just doesn't look pretty. You know, a lot of people complain, it doesn't look good. Um, sometimes they make sounds. You know, if you've ever been driving through a wind farm at night, it's kind of creepy because the turbines all have, I mean, the, the blades have um, lights on them. So, you know, planes and stuff don't fly in. So when you're driving through at night, they're all flashing and they kind of flash in sequence. You know, they'll all flash together. and I don't know. I think it's kind of cool, but some people think it's kind of scary. So the visual aesthetics of it, some people don't like. Um, also, sometimes when it makes sounds or, you know, people who complain about little birdies flying into the wind turbines and that sort of thing. Um, they require space. Winds can be uncontrollable and you'll need, again, another backup energy source. So solar thermal is something that you may or may not have heard of. Thermal meaning heat. So what you're doing is you're taking the sun's rays and you're concentrating it with a mirror. So if you ever have seen in movies, or maybe you're one of the kids who used to do this yourself, you go outside with a magnifying glass on a hot summer day and you put a piece of paper on the sidewalk and then you use your magnifying glass to concentrate and focus the sun ray. It gets really, really hot, right? And you can actually burn a piece of paper with a magnifying glass on a hot day by concentrating and focusing the sun's rays. And that's kind of the same thing in solar thermal, except you're using mirrors and then there's a generator involved. So you have your sun rays coming in and this is your heliostats, which is just a fancy word. It reflects the light into this receiver. And then what you're doing is, you know, it's just like all the other ones. You've got a steam generator and it turns the turbine and the generator. The turbines are these things that turn the crank and that turns a generator, and then you've got a condenser. By the way, if you want a relationship between turbine and generator, let me just show you real quickly. Um, on the channel, this one right here, voltage of a small hand generator, the hand crank is like the turbine, and the generator is on the inside. And a generator more or less works by having metals in there that can shed electrons, and a, a magnet moving around and it moves those electrons and it generates your electricity. Again, it's kind of similar to how this solar panel works. But at any rate, you have something turning a turbine which is attached to a generator, which makes your electricity. Like we talked about last week, they all are very similar in the sense that there's some sort of turbine and some sort of generator. And the only difference is what's in front of the turbine and generator. Another one that you um, have probably experienced in your life, you just didn't know it, is called photovoltaic, which is PV energy. It doesn't have any moving parts, it doesn't make any noise. Um, when you're using it, there's no pollution. When you're done with it, yes, there's pollution. But during the process, there's no, there's no pollution. So if you have um, a solar calculator or a solar watch, that's what we're talking about, okay? So your solar calculator, when you're done with it, obviously that's waste and yes, that's pollution. But while you're using your solar powered calculator, you're not emitting any dangerous chemicals or byproducts or anything. And so these are made from semiconductors and it can be more controllable. And so that video on the kids learning video is, is very similar to that. You've got extra electrons and missing electrons. And so what you do is the solar energy excites the electrons. That means it pushes them up to higher energy levels, gets them all excited, woo! And then it allows them to flow from the N type to the P type, just like a circuit. So as the electrons flow through the circuit, they power whatever device you've got in there. Um, then again, everything has disadvantages. So the disadvantages here are this is expensive like everything else. And then also, what do you do when it's not usable anymore? So biomass is what the name implies. Bio means life, mass meaning, you know, something that has space and it has uh, atoms involved and occupies space. And so when we're talking about biomass, we're talking about the byproducts of photosynthesis. Basically, we've got the pro <laughs> photosynthesis process here. This is some sort of sugar. 
And then the energy from plants can be harvested. You can either take those plants and burn them directly. Um, obviously burning produces a whole host of problems. You know, that's why there are complaints against fossil fuels because of all of the burning involved and all of the pollution that comes from burning. But you can burn plants, heat water, make steam, turn the turbine, turn the generator, make your electricity. Or you could also produce liquid fuel like ethanol um, using yeast as a catalyst. And there's your ethanol. And then you burn that ethanol to make fuel. And again, it's the same complaint. You burn the, the fuel, you're gonna get pollution. And so here's some advantages and disadvantages. Um, we kind of talked about this. There's an imbalance between the CO2 absorbed and emitted, and then plants can be burned directly or converted. So, I mean, in terms of a, that's an advantage in the sense that there's no processing involved to get it ready. But the disadvantage is you got to grow all these plants. You got to be okay with converting large areas of land into plants for biomass. Um, and you've got to, you know, sacrifice some of your cropland. And then it's a high consumption of energy in the sense that you got to grow plants, right? Growing plants takes water, it takes nutrients, it takes all of the things that are involved in farming to now be redirected to biomass. Geothermal power, this is literally using the energy from the inside of the earth. So if you didn't already know this, the inside of the earth is really hot and it's a high temperature, high pressure environment. And so you can drill down into the ground deep enough and you can actually get this uh, steam emission to turn turbines, which turns generators, which produces electricity. Um, and then sometimes, you know, just earth steam itself can be directly used. I've actually heard of applications of geothermal where you can do it at your own house. Like you can have your own, your own generator there at your house. If you wanna make your house a geothermal house, there are companies that you can hire that'll come drill down, find the right spot. If you live in the right part of the country, right? You can't just do it wherever. Um, and you can actually make your house a geothermal house, kind of cool. The disadvantages are, you know, like I just said, it's limited in where you can do it. And then that steam, when you're done with it, what do you do with it? It does contain gases because it's coming from the inside of the earth and all that good stuff. And then we have nuclear power, which is definitely not a renewable energy source. I don't know why your book calls it renewable, because when you've got radioactive materials, that's not renewable. You're going to you can eventually run out of that. Um, it doesn't produce smog or CO2. Um, and it is less expensive, but the disadvantage is um, you need a supply of uranium-235. Like I said, it's not renewable. I don't know why your book calls it renewable, because it's not. Renewable means it can be renewed, like the sun, right? Uh, radioactive waste is produced, and then there's a large public fear of, of nuclear. So a lot, of, a lot of people just generally are scared of nuclear power because of things that have happened in the past. So if you look at how energy gets used, and this is not recent, this is not a recent statistic, but I would assume it's probably not much different now, how energy gets used in your houses here in the United States. You can look that over on your own time. And this is the same thing that I've been saying over and over and over and over and over and over and over. And so I hope that if I say it enough, it'll kind of stick <laughs> because I want you to understand, I want you to take from all this, that energy production the last two to three steps are all the same. You've got something turning a turbine, which turns a generator and makes your electricity. Then that electricity gets sent out over the power lines to your home. And some of that energy is going to get lost as heat when the turbines are turning, like friction, right? Friction produces heat that loses some of your, your electricity. And then just going through the power lines themselves, um, going through all the transformers and all that good stuff, heat loss, you're going to lose a lot of your electricity that way too. So this whole process, you lose a lot of heat. And then your home itself is not all that efficient. So you have a lot of work to make this electricity and then a lot of it gets lost. But the, the big picture is that you've got something at the beginning. Doesn't matter what it is, whether you're burning gas, burning coal, burning plants, burning leaves, whatever. You're, you're usually most of the time creating steam of some sort, unless you're talking about wind, which it's just turning the turbine directly. Um, or if you're talking about hydroelectric, the falling water turns the turbine directly. 
but you've got something going on at the beginning that turns a turbine, that turns the generator, that makes your electricity and kicks it out to your house. And then I need you to understand that there are losses of heat along that way. And then if you've got natural gas just coming up directly, you know, you can transmit it and you can burn it within your own home. So here's a summary from the textbook of chapter three of the things we talked about, hydroelectric, wind, solar sources, PV cells, and then this, the impact on society. Um, fossil fuel is our primary source currently. We're trying to find alternatives. Um, we're trying to lower the cost. We're trying to find environmentally way, friendly ways that are more renewable. And then, like I said, here's a link to my YouTube channel. And if you actually scroll down, you'll see that hydroelectric video that was from last week. I would recommend checking that one out again. I think it was about a minute and a half. It's one of my kids and me using one of these kits that we have to use hydroelectric power to power a little light bulb. So as that turbine is turned, we get electricity. I hope you have a great day and thanks for watching.